Salamun alaikum, peace be upon you, and welcome back to Responses to Critics, Suhaib Web Part 6 and Final Part on Quranist Network Television, QNET TV. Uh, we will continue on to minute 24 now, where Mr. Webb talks about a difference of opinion regarding chapter 58 verse 4 which talks about uh, the recompense or sorry the remuneration of those who committed the zihar now we won't discuss what the zihar is but here he makes a point that there is a difference of opinion regarding whether we should feed 60 people or feed a person for 60 days and uh, apparently the Imams of Fiqh, the Imams of Islamic law, they are at odds about this. They don't know um, which is correct. Some of them say uh, 60 people and one of them actually says one person 60 times. So here we have to ask the question, if the Prophet actually did clarify this for the people, where is the clarification? If it was his job to do so, his job is not to clarify half the Qur'an or what Mr. Webb considers to be nas or text or something which is beyond dispute. His job is to clarify the Qur'an because when the traditionalist quote for us chapter 16 verse 44 which says that uh, he, we, he was given a dhikr so that he makes clear for us it doesn't say half the Quran, it doesn't say only the Nas, but not not the Ishtihadat, as Mr. Webb uh, dichotomizes uh, in our previous part, part 5. So where is this answer? And if Mr. Webb actually says there is an absence of the practice by the Prophet and his companions. So this means that uh, the Zihar never took place. But if you read the early part of chapter 58, uh, it talks about the actual case of Zihar, which the Sunnah clarifies actually happened. So why didn't it get clarified at that point in time and why did the four Imams not get that information? The answer is simple. The Sunnah and Hadith are not vicar. They were invented later on to corroborate with certain understandings of a verse. That's all it was. The truth is, we are meant to think, to experiment, trial and error, keep practicing whatever we can. That's our job. Our job is not to say, well, you know, I have so and so backing my opinion, therefore my opinion is authoritative. This is not what Islam is about. Uh, now we move on to minute 27.50 where Mr. Webb was describing the definition of Quran and he relates the etymology of the word Quran which is Qara'a to the word Qarya which also appears in the Quran. Qarya is a town and he says well you know parts of the town cohere together and that's how the Quran is it's a collection of something and I find this a remarkable interpretation and I thank Mr. Webb for it. I think uh, more so than that, a town is also a place where processes happen. You know, people interact with one another and growth takes place. So a town is a working system in the same way the Quran is a working system. So many thanks for that uh, uh, understanding of the word Quran. And uh, it can be, you know, I'm very uh, thankful to Mr. Webb for sharing his scholarship with us. And I actually recommend his videos. Uh, if you look at his interpretations of certain chapters, I think it's on his uh, YouTube page. He has lots of great things to tell us. And it's really worth taking a look at his works. Uh, unfortunately, we disagree with a lot of things he says. he says. And we need to be objective. What we can take, we take. What we can't take, we don't take. Uh, it's not chock-a-block. Uh, it's a matter of sharing notes.
Right, we now move on to minute 46 of uh, Mr. Webb's video. And uh, this is, we're very fast forwarding now, uh, minute 46, where he says that there is use of the intellect, but not where the kitab and sunnah are clear. Let's consider this for a minute. So we have kitab and sunnah, and we have the intellect. And the intellect must be placed below kitab and sunnah. Let's first analyze kitab and sunnah. Is it kitab and sunnah or a person's understanding of kitab and sunnah? The kitab must be interpreted and in some cases abrogated. The sunnah must be evaluated and in some case left out. So all this takes a human agency to do. You need to do this onto Kitab and Sunnah, then you will get, get uh, sorry, you will have an understanding of what Kitab and Sunnah says on a particular issue. And then below that you must place your intellect. That doesn't sound likely, doesn't sound very logical. After all, what are you using to extract from Kitab and Sunnah what you have extracted? You have certainly used your akal or your mind or your intellect. No, it, this is a, an unfair dichotomy to say that we have Kitab and Sunnah and you are using your akal. This is incorrect. All of us are using our akal because we need to interpret Kitab and Sunnah. We have seen in the previous minute that even the four Imams disagreed on verdicts which the Sunnah supposedly made clear. So how is it, how is it then that they can tell us, well, you know, you can only use your Akal within the boundaries of Kitab and Sunnah. No, Kitab and Sunnah is really a slogan which is being used and this slogan is used to leverage power over the Muslim masses. So the Muslim masses must use their, their akal, their minds, to interpret everything. There are no limitations to the use of our mind. And we now move on to the final point in Mr. Webb's video, where he talks about, and nobody else has so far uh, talked about this uh, among the people we have uh, engaged with, Mr. Webb talks about custom or urf. Uh, one of the sources of Sharia, at least ac according to Muhammad Hashim Kamali, who is a, a, an authority on Sharia law, uh, in his book, Principles of Islamic Jurisprudence, one of the principles of Sharia, one of the sources of Sharia is urf or custom. So custom is something which a community, a Muslim community practices. And Mr. Webb says that custom can never go against Quran and Sunnah. So obviously we agree about the Quran. We believe that the Quran should be our overarching source of law. It should arbitrate everything. But Mr. Webb says Quran and Sunnah. So here we have to ask the question, how is the Sunnah not custom? Because if you read, uh, for example, A History of Islamic Law by Joseph Schacht, the, uh, it tells us that the word Sunnah referred to the entire community, not just the Prophet, but the entire community up till the time of a Shafi'i, which is over 150 years after the Prophet. So Sunnah is actually custom, but it's made legitimate through the instrument of Hadith. So, for example, uh, let's say uh, in Arabia at, at, at the time, uh, it was custom customary to keep a beard. After all, uh, the Prophet was not born into a vacuum. He was born into a culture. And he adopted 
some elements of that culture. Not all elements, obviously, but some elements of that culture. Obviously, he did not wear a special fashion. He wore exactly what people wore at the time. He had a beard as perhaps was the fashion at the time. So this term urf or custom is actually relative to those who wish to leverage authority or those uh, who practice that custom. So if I tell you, okay, well, what I practice is urf and then you tell me, no, no, well, I have the sunnah and the sunnah overrides the urf. So I have to bow to your interpretation. So here, Mr. Webb unfortunately uh, takes the Arab culture of the time as sunnah. It is divinely inspired. So what this does to Islam is that it makes Islam localized to a particular space and time. That is not sunnah. The sunnah is exclusively in the Quran. It is a general set of principles which we can apply to any time and any space. And in doing so, we can achieve Islam. Urf is our right as cultural beings. Each of us, we eat a certain way, uh, we have facial hair or not have facial hair, we may wear the headscarf or not wear the headscarf. That is up to us, that is our culture. It is not sunnah, it is not divinely inspired by Allah. So with that, we close this responses to critics. Uh, I, I believe that it has been a very marvelous uh, journey of discovery for me uh, in understanding Mr. Webb's point of view and I learned a lot from Mr. Webb as well. Uh, in the coming weeks uh, we hope to focus on actually not responding but rather uh, putting together our uh, comprehensive refutations of various Sunni arguments and we hope to call that the sole authority of the Quran or authority of the Quran. Uh, in that program, we will be taking each Sunni argument and giving everything uh, possible to show that it is actually contrary to the Quran's own spirit. Uh, thank you very much for your viewership thus far. Uh, and we hope you will stick with us. Please give us uh, your support by subscribing to the channel, commenting, criticizing if you like. We're not perfect. We're always on a learning curve as it were. Uh, thank you very much. Bye.